All right, welcome everybody to the Octant community meeting for the 22nd of July, 2020. Uh, I'm gonna share this agenda and we can start to go over it. So the big item here is uh, 0.14 was released and 0.14.1 was released. <laughs> um, the 0.14 release went out and in it, there was a couple uh, issues that folks were running into. Uh, one was just they were getting prompted to enter a cube config, even though they already had a valid one configured. That was kind of an intermittent issue that we, we had some difficulty pinning down. Um, but we, we put in some changes that we think alleviated that for, for most people, if not all. So uh, the other thing was the uh, cube config flag got broken. So the environment variable was still working, but the, uh, the flag itself was not. So people who were using that we're seeing the uh, prompt to enter a cube config. So we got that fixed. And then we also managed to, uh, to fix the uh, navigation background color on uh, uh, when you're selecting menu items and navigate away. I can't remember the exact, exact thing there, but uh, all of the, so all of the, the full list of 0.14 features is here in the 0.14 release. Uh, the, the big highlights as mentioned last week that were coming when we did that short little demo was the creation of resources, port forwarding of services, uh, being able to start without a cube config and the experimental JavaScript plugin support, and then a whole host of uh, fixes and updates and, um, and things that were, were, were done as well. So feel free to look at the full notes to find out more and uh, 0.14.1 here. Uh, it was, yeah, there's the breadcrumb link. Uh, color and dark mode was off. So those are the three fixes we got in place. Uh, so thanks, uh, Sam did, did a great job of uh, getting this release out in quick, uh, quick fashion. So thank you, Sam, for taking care of that. And uh, for folks who haven't had a chance to try the new uh, 0.14, there is a there is a little demo on on YouTube that uh, steps through all of the. I think it hits most of the of the of the highlighted features uh, in that single demo. It's about two minutes long if you're interested. So anything anyone wants to add there about the ODOT 14 that I forgot? Excellent. Uh, so uh, something that came out of ODOT 14, so I wanted to bring up is uh, we're gonna, we, we did a proposal a while back, Sam wrote it up and we approved it and got it merged in. We haven't taken any action on it. It's about uh, getting our integration testing back in place. We had it previously when we were over on drone. We turned it off uh, because it was intermittently failing and it just wasn't configured well. Uh, uh, well, not configured well, it was configured just fine. It just wasn't, um, the tests were not uh, predictable and we had a bunch of flakes. So we turned them off um, and uh, we're noticing that we're hitting some issues that could be solved by having some integration tests back in, uh, specifically things like that, that dash F cube config not working, right? That's, that's like one of those uh, very th easy things to catch. And, and so we're gonna put some investment back into uh, getting our integration suite back up and running on GitHub Actions. Um, and um, we'll just, we'll keep people updated on how that goes. But the goal coming out of that is just to kind of make sure that uh, going forward, our releases are, uh, um, you know, have an extra layer of, of check on them and uh, coming out a little more polished and, and uh, not having to do so many, uh, the, you know, day zero point uh, dot release fixes. Um, not that we've had to do a lot. I think the furthest we've ever made it is to a, to a dot two, but um, maybe a dot three, but it's not too bad. But um, yeah, we'll be investing some stuff there. Uh, any, anybody want to add to that? Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, one thing with that that kind of happened after Sam did that initial work on that is, I mean, a proposal is we, we started using Storybook and Storybook gives us a lot of new options, including the uh, snapshots, they have story shots, uh, even a little bit of integration testing can be done on a, as long as you have a page inside the Storybook, you can, very easily uh, uh, plug in Cypress in there. I think I opened the issue for the, to just to explore Storybook a little more. I'll try to find the issue and post it. So definitely something to think about 
uh, how to bring all this together and, and improve the testing, overall testing, and, and try to catch more stuff like we had. Right, and what most of this really just boils down to is how we want to test our components as UI components. And then there's also the other right. piece of it is how do we test uh, how Octon behaves with various cluster states. And uh, I'm pretty confident that we can nail down the component piece pretty well. Uh, the right. Kubernetes part always makes things complicated. Yeah, Definitely. I think originally we were, we were doing some stuff with Kind. Um, we may revisit that, but yeah, the, I, I know, I know what we want to avoid is, is essentially like mocking out the whole API. So it's not really doing anything. Um, we'd prefer to be, be doing some integration against the cluster. We do have a, the team has a cluster that, that lives in, um, uh, it's a, it's a GKE cluster. So that's something we can consider leveraging as well for integration testing, um, at least on the, on the tail end of integrations. So like do, do certain stuff in kind and then, and then do if all those pass through some final steps out in, uh, in GKE or something like that. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep folks updated on that as we, as we invest some time there and, and figure things out. Um, so next on the list is we will be, so we previously we would kind of just, uh, you know, ad hoc, uh, work through work and then release when it was ready. Uh, we're going to, we have some extra members on the team now and just for the sake of consistency and, and uh, allowing us to have a, a release cadence that's, that's uh, tied to the end of sprints. So that, that's a little more predictable. We're going to be moving to a two week sprint cycle. Um, that really shouldn't, that's more of just a implementation detail for, for the, for the community and people who want to contribute, but uh, know that, that that's how we'll be working moving forward. And, um, that you'll likely start to see a release that comes out uh, with the alignment of these sprint cycles, be it every two weeks or every four weeks. Uh, that's, that's, that's kind of the cadence we're going to try to shoot for. Um, and that's, that's really it. Uh, just, just wanted to get folks informed about that in case you're, you're planning on doing some upstream contributions or you're working on plugin things or, or, or things like that. Know that, um, we'll be doing that and, uh, we'll use this meeting as a way to kind of demo the, the mid sprint progress for everybody and, and get feedback and, and prioritize things as, as they're coming in from the community. So that's all we have for the, for the major updates. Um, then I wanted to get into a, to a couple of things that we're, that we're considering and thinking about. One is the thing that when I say we, I mean, mostly just me right now, but we're starting to. Uh, it's starting to come together a, a bit more. So in the 0.14 release, is there, there's an experimental JavaScript runtime um, that I have been kind of prototyping. And recently I put up a PR that adds the ability to do HTTP get calls. Uh, it leverages the, the work that Scott Andrews did to apply YAML. And then it also adds the ability to delete a resource. Um, and then the, uh, the JavaScript plugin itself there's a uh, Yo generator that will scaffold out a plugin for you. That's been updated to show an RJX workflow. Um, th this was something that actually came up out of a conversation around the current Go plugins. Um, the way plugins get called is the call, the handlers in a plugin are called on our event loop cycle. So every every second, your your plugin handlers are being called, and this creates. Uh, using RxJS, for those who are not familiar with it, it's a, it's a behavior framework that lets you um, uh, set up observables and, and conditions and subjects. So the reason I put this in there as a demo is, is it shows how to detach your running plugin code from the event loop of Octant. So if you have a, a job that you only want to run at certain time periods or only when in new information has come in, you can use RxJS to enable that workflow in a very easy way uh, so that you're not constantly calling some remote API every one second. Um, and so the, the, that's all part of this uh, 1141 PR that's up. It won't be in a release uh, at least for the next two weeks, but it will be in master for those who have been uh, messing around with the JavaScript plugin runtime 
which I think right now is probably just me and Sam, but it's there. And uh, the other thing, I, I just opened a new issue, 1145. Uh, this one is specifically around taking some of, um, taking some of the new work that Milan has been doing uh, and taking some of the old work around a Tekton plugin uh, that, um, oh, who, uh, I wanna give him credit. Let me, let, me, let me find it here. I know it's in here. Uh, uh, yes, Jason Hall. Uh, he, he prototyped a, a Tekton plugin. Uh, it's in the uh, upstream experimental branch, uh, experimental folder for Tekton. Uh, taking some of those ideas of leveraging Cytoscape, leveraging uh, uh, the Dagri and or Dagger, Dagri, I don't know, Dag, D Darge, D D anyway. I just call it Dagri. <laughs> yeah, leveraging this <laughs> resource um, to enable, uh, instead of using a Graphiz viewer, which is what uh, Jason Hall had used when he wrote the Tekton plugin, uh, actually just having a native workflow component. Um, and so the, the, there's some conversation happening here. We encourage people to join in. Um, but the idea here would be taking like what, taking stuff from like Knative and, and Tekton and being able to actually visualize the steps that are being, that are being taken by these, um, by these functions and, and, and show that in a way that eventually it would be initially be read only and then eventually would have some actions and you'd be able to retry things and, and start new things. So uh, that's, that's some feature work that we're, that we're looking at now. Um, one thing that I don't have in here that I didn't forget about, uh, but we have to, I have to do some more prioritization work and thinking on it is the subject access stuff and the new, um, uh, dynamic client work. Uh, th that's still something that's very important. We know that it is impacting people uh, who are on highly restricted clusters. And, and it is something that I am, I am very hopeful that I can get into uh, 0.15. So um, we'll, we'll, I'm targeting for that. So, you know, likely four weeks. And uh, the hope is that that will, um, that will finally start to uh, alleviate some of those issues that people have when they're dealing with like restricted clusters or um, uh, credentials that expire and, and things like that. The, the, the catalyst for some of this was, was a lot of the work that, that Sam did with allowing uh, Octant to start without a kube config at all. What that did is it kind of uh, detached some of the, the pieces that are, that are necessary for starting Octant and getting it running, um, which, allows us to now have the, like a almost, I don't want to, it's not really a middleware, but essentially a middleware, a space to do work that is the, the between when you type the command in and to, to launch Octane and when we actually do our first call out to the API, we now have some space there to actually start to implement some of these things like looking up what you're allowed to do and caching that information and, and preparing Octane to say like, don't even, don't even try to load these types of resources because this client doesn't have access to them. That way you're not, you're not, you're, you're presented with a screen that says you don't have access to this instead of presented with a screen that's just the error output from a console message embedded in a text component embedded in a table, which is not a great experience. So th that stuff's all there in flight. Uh, it's, it's still very important to me and uh, it's still being worked on. Uh, and that, that's all of our current agenda. Were there any additions, questions, comments? Excellent. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for attending and see you next week.